Hi everyone, welcome to the channel and thank you once again for your love and support. In this video, I am going to read Dickinson's Because I Could Not Stop for Death, the second part of the poem. Uh, the second part of the video consists of the last two stanzas of the poem. Uh, as you know that Dickinson was obsessed with the meditations, thoughts of death, morbidity, mortality. Because I could not stop for death is not an exception. And in the poem, Dickinson describes the posthumous consciousness of the speaker, her journey with death and immortality to her final destination and her final disillusionment. You know that in many poems, Dickinson has significantly deviated from the Christian convention, especially in the belief of heaven and hell. One such poem is Uphill. In Uphill, Dickinson speaks of an uphill shelter, an uphill refuge, where the soul goes after death and the soul gets raised in proportion with the labor committed uh, in the in the in the mundane uh, life so you see in uphill a dickinson is challenging the christian convention of heaven and hell there is no such uh, idea of heaven and hell in the poem uh, it only rest and you get rest according to the labor you have done in your life if you have uh, completed all your works of all your assigned tasks the promises you have made then you will get rest posthumous rest and if you have not done then you won't get rest so you see how 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 dickinson uh, has deviated from the christian conventions and in, because i could not stop for death there is a deviation a significant deviation from the concept of heaven and hell because because uh, the speaker who has traveled with death and immortality to her final destination the graveyard has stayed there for a century or more but she is not yet been sent either to heaven or hell so without wasting time let us move to the text uh, we paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground the roof was scarcely visible the cornice in the ground so very clearly the house here refers to the graveyard the final destination for the dead body the swelling of the ground refers to the grave you know that the ground is swelled after the dead body is buried or after the completion of the funeral service the roof was scarcely visible that line is very important because it uh, suggests the limitlessness of the posthumous existence that the posthumous existence is not bound by any roof. The roof was scarcely visible, meaning the upward uh, dimension of the house was limitless. She did not say that there was no roof. She said that the roof was scarcely visible, that there could be roof, but that was not visible. That was hardly visible to me. The cornish in the ground and the cornish was in the ground since then it's centuries now we are back in the present and yet feels shorter than the day i first surmised the horse's heads were toward eternity the last stanza is perhaps the most significant stanza of the poem in which the speaker reveals how she was disillusioned because the day 
she died and she traveled with death and immortality to her final destination she had expected uh, that the carriage would take her to towards eternity towards uh, heavenly bliss but her heavenly expectations were not answered since, since then she has passed a whole century though it uh, appeared shorter than the day precisely because uh, in the posthumous life temporality does not function i told you in the last video that time ceases the moment man ceases so the posthumous existence is a timeless existence the mundane concept of time and temporality does not work after death she had thought that the horses heads that the horses would move towards my heavenly destination her heavenly destination but no she was taken to the graveyard and she was waiting there for eternity instead of her heavenly bliss or maybe heavenly sufferings she was given eternal waiting for the judgment so in the last stanza as you can see dickinson has significantly deviated from the christian convention uh, uh, of the heaven and hell that that after death the soul is sent to the heaven or the hell according to the uh, karma of the man uh, in his in his mundane life such convention is challenged in the last stanza of the poem where the speaker is quite disillusioned and her expectations are never answered at present i am reminded of the ending of joyce's arabi the narrator you remember uh, when he uh, reached arabi the oriental fate <coughs> how disillusioned he was and he became so angry that his eyes were glowing his fiery eyes proved how badly he was deceived his expectations of visiting a brilliant a flamboyant a magnificent uh, bazaar oriental bazaar uh was never answered was never fulfilled it was a place of of uh, of monetary uh, concerns it was a place f- filled with darkness it was a place uh, filled with selfish laughter and at the end of the story the narrator said that i found myself in the dark so similarly in the, in the at the end of the poem because i could not stop for death the speaker is disillusioned after her death she found that all the christian promises for heaven are never fulfilled are never kept after her death thank you very much thank you for watching in the next video we are going to deal with uh, some literary terms and after that we shall read hopkins's felix randall goodbye